Coca-Cola. P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. United States Counter Spy. Especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the Crystalline Double Cross. A thrilling counter spy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by delicious Pepsi Cola. And now, another report to the American people. In your family's interest, listen to these findings. Recently released by the United States Testing Company, Incorporated. After thorough and impartial tests, Pepsi-Cola proved of highest purity. Pepsi-Cola has more quick food energy in value, ounce for ounce, than any other leading nationally known cola. Yes, tested, compared against all other nationally known cola drinks. Pepsi-Cola won out. You get the best and twice as much in delicious Pepsi-Cola. And now to Counter Spy... Two weeks ago in the vault of the New York jewel dealers, Lamar and Moffat, the crystalline diamond, an official gift of the United States from the Rajah of Subgun, sparkled under the harsh light of a hanging lamp. A tall man of 45 with iron gray hair and horn-rimmed glasses, Arthur Lamar, bent over the jewel, lost in wonder. Suddenly... Behind him, out of the darkness, came another figure. Swift, silent, with upraised arm. A pause, and then... (laughs) Bulletin to all police and counter-spy field officers. Last night, the crystalline diamond of Sukun was stolen from the New York jewel firm of Lamar and Moffat. All authorities are warned to be on the lookout. Of course I am, Victor. You and I are running away. I feel as if the whole country were after us. I hope you'll never be sorry that you've come with me. Never. This is the big adventure of my life, Victor. Just you keep thinking that way, Anne. Only even big adventures have to be planned. I've put myself in your hands. Where we're driving to, for instance. Well, where? You know, for several years I've taken vacations. But did you notice that I've never told anyone where I've been? That's right, you didn't. I went regularly to the little California town of Oceanside. And I lived there and became known as John Robertson, an Eastern businessman. Now you will appear there as the new Mrs. Robertson. How easy you make it sound. Far from it. But I always knew that someday I'd need John Robertson. The day that I couldn't stand another minute of my dear partner, Arthur Lamar. And this time John Robertson and wife will stay in Oceanside quietly for a year... Maybe two? Not too quietly, Victor. I've had years of that. Oh, I think I can promise you it won't be too quiet. Not when Arthur finds out about, um... What? Me. When he finds out what his partner has really done to him. (laughs) I'd love to see his face. Gentlemen of the press, I'm Arthur Lamar. I'm very sorry to have kept you waiting, but uh, I was delayed by further police and insurance company investigation and uh, by a little more medical attention for the blow on the head that I received last night. Uh, I, I think you all know the main facts. The crystalline diamond, the most perfect jewel in the world, was stolen last night from the vault of Lamar and Moffat by my partner, Victor Moffat. But now I have a special announcement. I am personally offering a reward for the capture of Victor Moffat. $50,000 alive, $100,000 dead. (laughs) 
Morning paper, please. There you go. Hey. Hey, taxi. Count us by headquarters, please. Peters, the moment I saw the paper, I rushed here to headquarters for further information. Mr. Harding, you knew about the theft of the crystalline diamond yesterday. I mean this reward for Victor Moffat. 50000 alive, 100000 dead. That's the stupidest thing I've seen in years. Take it easy, Dave. You'll burn a bearing. Diamond is national property, but normally we wouldn't have to worry about it. Police and insurance investigators are able to take care of it. But this reward... I'm going to New York and see Arthur Lamar. <laughs> With all due respect, Mr. Lamar, I'm afraid you you were very upset when you announced this reward. I was, Mr. Harding. I still am. Why, we were entrusted with that diamond on its way to Washington, and my firm has been made to look untrustworthy. I... But, Mr. Harding, why are you so upset about this yourself? Mr. Lamar, it's the nature of the reward you're offering for Moffat. 50000 alive, well and good. But to offer twice as much for him dead, that's an invitation to murder. Murder? By elements in the underworld, unscrupulous individuals who see a chance to collect a great deal of money for committing a crime. Oh, good heavens, I never thought of it that way. Besides, you put Moffat on notice, he may be shot to death without a chance, without a trial. A chance, a trial? He's as guilty as he can be. Mr. Lamar, a man like Moffat doesn't usually carry weapons. He's not a killer, a professional gunman. That means he could easily be taken alive. But now you've made sure that capturing him will cost blood. But he must be armed, Mr. Harding. A, a gun I kept at home is missing. In any case, will you withdraw that reward, Mr. Lamar? Mr. Harding, am I violating any law by posting the reward for Moffat, alive or dead? Frankly, no. Then I will not withdraw it. May I ask you, frankly, Mr. Lamar, what purely personal motive leads you to want to see Moffat dead? I... I've said nothing to the press about this, Mr. Harding. But Victor Moffat fled in the company of a woman, my wife. Victor, shouldn't we be on U.S. Highway 22A? We are, darling. We just passed the sign saying this is Pennsylvania 101B. Same thing, Anne. <laughs> Relax. Oh. I was just thinking, how many more states to California... Here's a little town, or the edge of one. You hungry? That was an enormous lunch we had. Well, still it's late. Suppose we find a nice motor court, and then I'll uh, get in some food for a light supper. Fine, Victor. It was a waste of time, Peters. Total waste of time. Dave, you're still so angry, you don't even notice that I'm here in the New York field office when you left me in Washington. What? That's right. What are you doing here? Well, I had a hunch you might not get far with Lamar, Dave. And the harm's already been done. News of the reward's been sent all over the country by now. So I thought maybe I could be of some help. Well, the real twister is that Moffat also ran off with Lamar's wife. Now, we'll put out a general search bulletin on Victor Moffat and Mrs. Lamar. We've got to find them before some gunman does. Roast beef, rye bread, pickles, special containers of coffee, and... Anne, where did you get that gun? It's Arthur's. I took it. Why? In case anything unexpected came up. You uh, gave me quite a surprise. I just had one myself. What? While you were out getting the food, I thought the proprietor of this place might have a newspaper. I... I was curious to see what Arthur might be doing or saying about my leaving with you. The man had a newspaper, all right. There's my surprise. On page one. Yes, I, I see. I read it, and then I got out the gun. This is where my one big adventure ends, I said to myself. Here in a motor court somewhere in Pennsylvania. The end. 
And you walked in that door, I was going to kill you. And give me that. Eleven rotten years with Arthur. And at last I thought I could get free of him with you. I felt wonderful, Victor. That's what made this even a greater surprise. Why didn't you tell me? You might not have come with me. And I love you. What kind of a life can we have? Hunted all over the country. What made you steal the crystal and diamond? Why didn't you tell me? Well, it just came into my head uh, suddenly when I saw Arthur looking at it. And, Dan, this doesn't change anything. You wanted an adventure. You're getting a bigger one. You talk like a child, Victor. What good is that diamond to you? I've been planning that. After hiding out in California, we'll go to Indonesia. There are some diamond cutters there that I can deal You'll with. You'll never get across the country, Victor. There's a price on your head. Alive or dead. Well, what of it? Oh. Ah. Men can be dead. Sooner or later, you need help from underworld characters. And you'll be worth $100,000 to any one of them that decides to double-cross you. Well, yes, there's something in that, I but... see only one thing to do. Give up this crazy California scheme. Give it up? We've got to get away from the influence of this reward of Arthur. Away from the American police and American criminals. We've got to leave the country. Now, Anne, for the love we of heaven... We don't dare you... cross the whole country now. We'll have to go back. Stay to Philadelphia. Find a ship. Get on us somehow. Quickly. Anne. Anne. Darling, I told you this is the big adventure of my life. It's not what I expected, but we'll go through with it. And I want you alive. Don't you understand? On the teletype, Dave. Oh. From police department, Ogilvy, Pennsylvania. Couple believed to be Victor Moffat and Mrs. Anne Lamar. Spent some hours in motor court here. Have touched nothing until hear from you. Come on, Peters. Robertson of Oceanside, California, Dave. Well, Peters, we can ignore that. I found a few fingerprints, and they match the card we made up on Moffat in New York. Well, is that any help? They disappeared from here, and nobody knows which direction they left in. We may have a clue in this Philadelphia newspaper. Oh? Yeah. See this page? Shipping news. And the paper's well folded and flattened, as if this particular part of this page had been studied over and over. Mm-hmm. Shipping news and ship sailings from eastern ports. And that suggests that Moffat and the woman who first planned a western getaway have changed their minds and are doubling back to the east coast for a ship to get out of the country. We don't know from which port. Well, let's get to a phone. We'll have to get out a general alarm to all eastern seaports and airfields, just in case. You know, there's another difficulty, Dave. Some ship may take them aboard before an alarm ever reaches it. Oh, wait. Wait a second. Hmm? Peters, you suppose we could split that couple... Turn them against each other, you mean? It's clear Moffat stole the diamond, but according to Lamar, the woman had little or nothing to do with the theft itself. And the reward is only for him. Exactly. We'll get out the alarm first. Then I'm going to issue a statement to the press pointing out that she has nothing to lose by coming in, but she risks her life by going on with him. Come on, Peters, we need telephones. Presented by delicious Pepsi-Cola. Have you heard about those tests by that famous laboratory? Have you heard the latest news in the Pepsi-Cola story? Yes, there's big news about Pepsi. The cola you've always known was most delicious, the cola you've always known was best value, is now shown to be the cola of proven highest quality. That's right. The U.S. Testing Company Incorporated reports you get more quick food energy... More quick food energy, ounce for ounce, in delicious Pepsi-Cola than any other nationally known leading cola drink. Yes, your Pepsi is really tops. Taste the tops, is the tops, and gives the most. So go ahead, enjoy that extra zing and bounce delicious Pepsi gives you. 
Insist on it wherever you may be. When you stop at the fountain, make sure you say, Pepsi, please. When you stop at a stand, make sure you say, Pepsi, please. And at the store, get Pepsi in the money-saving carton of six big 12-ounce bottles. Pepsi six bottles serve 12 refreshing glassfuls. Twice as much. So save money and get the best. Come on, sing the Pepsi song with us. Pepsi Cola, it's a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Twice as much and better, too. Pepsi Cola is a drink for you. Delicious Pepsi Cola. Delicious Pepsi Cola. Delicious Pepsi Cola. Delicious Pepsi Cola. Now back to Counter Spy. Anne Lamar and Victor Moffat, in possession of the crystalline diamond worth $2 million, have reached temporary safety near the Philadelphia waterfront in a nondescript boarding house. And Mr. David Harding, chief of the counter spies, speaking to a press conference, said he believed that Mrs. Lamar was not implicated in the theft of the diamond. And he added, with a price on Victor Moffat's head, she might soon realize that her life was in constant danger. She had nothing to lose and everything to gain, Mr. Harding said, by leaving Moffat and clearing herself with the authorities. Well, Anne, there's your chance. Chance? To end your adventure, free and clear. The invitation is published in every newspaper in the country. I hope you feel honored. You don't have to get sarcastic, Victor. You can see what they're up to. Of course, they hope you'll telephone the nearest police station and say that Victor Moffat is at number 14 West Race Street. You know, in posting that reward, Arthur was much more clever than I ever thought he could be. Arthur was clever? The reward is not for the diamond, but for you. That means we can't even return the diamond somehow and escape. But we're going to escape with the diamond. Victor, I'm willing to give up. What? We can never escape together. Never. Now, darling, now, wait a minute. Your nerve's going. You're just tired. No. It's been getting clearer and clearer in my mind. Leaving New York with you, that was my escape from a dreary, horrible life with Arthur. And then the diamond and the price on your head as if you were a Western bad man of the old days. And now, my invitation to betray you. But if you give up, that's what you'll be doing. Oh, no. I'm going to do something much more to the point. Somehow Arthur spoils everything for me. And I'm going to make him pay for that. I am going to see him and kill him. And for heaven's sake, you're losing your good common sense. I'm sorry, Victor. It's all over. Goodbye. Anne! Hello, Mr. Lamar. This is David Harding. Oh, good evening, Mr. Harding. I miss you at your office. I took this chance of catching you at your country place. Yes, yes, I wanted a quiet evening for a change. These past few days have been pretty hectic for me. Well, tell me, are you alone there? Why, yes, except for a caretaker and his wife who live about a quarter mile away. Why? Well, just keeping in touch, that's all. Uh, did I give you the emergency number of our New York field office? It's Quadrant 10,000. Oh, Quadrant 10,000. Right, I made a note of it, Mr. Harding. Fine. Good night. Now, Peter, call the squad room. Send two men in a patrol car to Lamar's place. Tell them not to disturb him. Just get near the house and keep their eyes open. Don't you trust Lamar, Dave? He's a strange man, Peter. He hates Moffat more on account of his wife than on account of the diamond. And if Mrs. Lamar responds to our invitation, his desire for revenge might get in our way. Get out of the squad room, Peter. I want those men out there fast. I called the office, then the apartment, and finally I thought you might be in the bungalow. I hope you're alone. What do you want, Anne? Where are you? Arthur, do you want the diamond back? You mean you've got it? I can arrange for you to get it. How? Not so fast, Arthur. With the diamond, you get me, too. What does that mean? How seriously do you want to know? I'd give anything In to... one hour, I'll meet you at the River Ford Sawmill. You know the place? Why, that's fantastic. It's always deserted at night, Arthur. You'll be safe there. In one hour? Hello? Hello! Dave, a 
radio report from Phillips and Margolis. Lamar has left his house. They're tailing him. We're going out there, too, Peter. in this place, Anne? This little bit of moonlight through the skylight's enough. And you hate me. Why do you want to look at me? Why did you want me to meet you here? I'm feeling very repentant, Arthur. <laughs> you mean you woke up to the fact that you did a crazy thing running off with that thief market. And now you're trying to save yourself, huh? You never let me get away with anything, do you, Arthur? I want that dime. And I'm willing to take you back again as my wife. What more do you want? Where is the diamond, Anne? We'll have to wait. What for? You know, Arthur, I didn't know you hated me so much. I wonder if you know how much. I think so. You didn't care if you caused the murder, picked them off it. Murder? You mean you've killed him? Don't sound so hopeful, Arthur. No, I haven't killed him. But he's sure to die sooner or later, isn't he? So I walked right into a trap. It's not a trap, Arthur. I followed Anne here and then I waited. And then when I saw you come in, I decided I'd better come in too. Victor, will you give up that diamond? Certainly not. Anne has already promised it to me. What? Victor, why did you have to come? I told you I wanted to see Arthur. I can't let you kill him. Give me that gun. No. No, he's ruined everything. I will kill him. Give me that gun. Now, Arthur, I came here only to stop her and I suggest you go. Victor, you fool. Now you'll never get away. Give me the diamond, Victor, and surrender. It's your only chance. Don't listen to him, Victor. Now that you're here, you've got to kill it. You haven't got the nerve to shoot. <laughs> Thank heaven you did it, Victor. Anne, you've made me a murderer. <laughs> I'm getting a report from Phillips and Margolis on the earphones. What is it? This is it. They've located Lamar's car near a sawmill a mile north of Lamar's house, and they've got Victor Martha cornered inside. They're waiting for orders. Let's get there, Peter. It's all my fault, Victor. I've ruined everything for you. We'll get out of this, Anne, somehow. Yes, more men, perhaps. Victor, listen. You stay here. They won't hurt you. I'm going to make a break for it. You'll never make it, Victor. What's that? I don't know. Something thrown against the back wall, probably to confuse us. You stay here for a minute. Moffat, we give you ten seconds. Or we come in after you. Stay here, Anne. I'll go see what that if was. If they come in here, I'll use this. A piece of wood? What good is that? Go ahead, Victor. All right. You wait here and I'll... All right, you men out there. You can come in now. Come on in. Margoli, take Philip and cover the rear. All right, men. Close in. Come right, Peter. Right. Is this Mrs. Lamar? Oh, I'm so glad you came up. Fred Lamar is dead, Chief. I guess this is Martha. This must be the crystalline diamond in this chamois bag that was in his pocket. Mrs. Lamar, can you tell us what happened? I, I wanted to return to my husband. Moffat followed and killed Arthur. Then you knocked Moffat out, huh? Yes, for this piece of wood. I was afraid we'd all be killed. This gun beside Moffat's hand, Mrs. Lamar. How about that? The gun? Oh, oh yes, the, the two of them struggled together. Moffat got it away from my husband and shot him. I see, Mrs. Lamar. Only this gun of your husband's disappeared from his house the night you left. He reported it. That means you lied just now about how your husband was killed, doesn't it? Means you had your husband's gun when you left with Muffet. How many other lies have you just told, Mrs. Lamar? Lies? You weren't really trying to come back to your husband tonight, were you? 
you were trying to double-cross him again and double-cross Moffat once you realized the whole game was up. Well, yes, it's, it's true. Everything was ruined for me. And I couldn't have led Moffat back here without some kind of a trick. Mr. Harding, I am going to claim that $50,000 reward for Victor Moffat alive. Where this diamond came from, Mrs. Lamar, it was said that whenever it changed hands, three men must die. Soon after making his will, the Raja of Subgun was murdered. Your husband lies here. And the third... Victor. Yes, he's dead from that blow you gave him. I charge you with his murder. Call the field office, Peters. We're through here. takes care of the crystalline diamonds. Now let's take care of the refreshments. Bring on those big, big Pepsis and have delicious Pepsi-Cola all around. Mmm, tastes good. You just can't match Pepsi's fresh, tangy flavor. And there's plenty for two of you in Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottle. Get Pepsi by the carton. It's six bottles, but 12 drinks. So save all that money and enjoy that extra zing and bounce delicious Pepsi gives you. Remember, Pepsi's proven highest quality, yet it gives you twice as much. Pepsi Cola, it's a spot, two full glasses, that's a lot, twice as much and better too. Pepsi Cola is the drink for you. Delicious Pepsi Cola, delicious Pepsi Cola, delicious Pepsi Cola, delicious Pepsi Cola. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen on Tuesday for the exciting. Case of the Mama's Boy Murderer. He murdered brutally when his racket was threatened. But when his personal safety was at stake, he lost his nerve. That was the dangerous racketeer your counter spies pursued in the case of the Mama's Boy Murderer. Next Tuesday on Counter Spy. <laughs> Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York, was directed by Marx B. Loeb, dramatized by Paul Milton, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. This is Jay Jackson speaking. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi Cola. Enjoy some delicious Pepsi tonight. Uh-huh.